Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first episode of the year of Watch News Weekly. And speaking of year, this year is the year of the dragon. So we're going to talk about the multitude of releases that actually happen every year, if you think about it. And these are Chinese zodiac signs. And every brand under the sun wants to jump on the bandwagon of what is the largest luxury goods market in the world, i.e. the Asian market. Speaking of Zodiac, do you believe in that stuff, like Zodiac and all the stuff you read in the newspaper? You know what I'm talking about? Like, no, not yeah. at all. <laughs> I'm going to start this off with IWC, right? And IWC, did, they're Portuguese, right? Uh, they did it in a traditional burgundy red, which is a lucky color for the Asian market, but specifically for the Chinese market. One of the more reasonably priced pieces, and to be fair, it's because they really didn't do a whole lot to it outside of taking a rotor and making it into a dragon, giving it a different color dial, and pricing at 93.50. Let's pull up the picture. And you know what? Love the color. Can't argue with the color. Not a fan of that strap at all. Yeah. Like that texture of that strap, I feel like takes away from the watch and the dial. Yeah, I don't disagree. I, I, I do agree. I don't love the strap, the, especially the texture. Just the texture of it just throws everything off. I also feel like they could have experimented with maybe a little bit of PVD or something to making the case darker. I mean, I don't know what more they can do. They release a, a burgundy dial Portuguese are very similar to this. It's not yeah, all and that, then they just I think the they took the same they took the same watch, yeah, made it a limited edition of a dragon, thousand pieces and threw a, a dragon uh, rotor on there. Again, I'm a fan of the Portuguese. So yeah. I can't say that I don't like this watch. I'm a fan of the dial, but would I specifically go out there and buy one with a dragon rotor? Probably for the sake of conversation. But again, show me something that I can tell that that's the year the dragon works. Yeah, there's nothing can't. like like if you turn the watch over. Otherwise, there's no real way for you to you know, see. Exactly. It. Let's go to the next guy, and the next up on the list is going to be a Tacuir Carrera Chronograph Year the Dragon Watch. Now, prices are if you're talking about the steel version, you're at 6,300. If you go and jump up to gold, it's priced at 22,550. Now, a limited edition of 350 pieces, respectfully in steel and in gold, and again. Calligraphic dragon character at six o'clock. They gave us a little something. And if we flip to the picture, again, majority is going to be in the rotor. Something has been done many times before. I've seen it in older models. I've been around because, you know, these, these cycle, how, how many zodiac signs? Every couple of years, I think, no? No, no. It's Every how, many, year? how many total zodiac signs oh. are there? So it's 12. It's 12, 12 years. Okay. Right? If there are 12 of them, it's, so I've been here for the last zodiac releases 12 years ago. You were still in middle school or maybe preschool? Elementary. Elementary yeah. school, whatever you want to call it. So the whole dragon, uh, the whole rotor as the dragon thing has been done. I've seen it a multitude of times. I do love the color scheme. And unlike the IWC, the strap here just really works in the rose gold version. Yeah. It's sort of very, it's a very light pink gold. Uh, I like the pink gold dial. I like the red sub uh, uh, dials. I think it's amazing. The little stamp on a dial is... Mm, I almost but at say, least it's something. It almost looks like, you know... Uh, almost looks like the Portuguese are before. <laughs> no, but not, not even just that. You know, like, uh, it's not the Conjar logo. It's the name when it's, they have... Yes. The, the it almost reminds me it of... Does. It, it looks it like does. a Conjar. It, it, the, it, I forget it, the, it absolutely, what the stamp it, is called. But, it, yeah, but, uh, the only gripe I have against this watch is the no color match date. I feel like at, at this point, it's you're 2024. Right. Now I can't see it. It's like a white white date wheel. Like, I don't understand why brands do not color match their date wheels. It still doesn't make sense to me. And the dial you're referring to is the Caboose dial. Caboose, the Caboose. Of, the, 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 the main name of Sultan. Uh, with, with that said, uh, I now cannot unsee that white date. Let's move on to the next one. And next uh, item up is going to be Hublot. Now, I know what you're going to say. Hublot? Like, people have asked me, why do you like Hublot? Because I think that Hublot makes pretty watches. Aesthetically. Now, there's some ugly ones. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and... But majority of them aesthetically are very, very pleasing. They're good looking watches, right? Mm -hmm. Now people will argue in regards to the charge, the upcharge for the movement that's inside some of these pieces, right? And again, arguably they could be correct. But for me, there's some people that are horological people. There are some people that are aesthetic people. And I'm the biggest horological, you know, fan, right? I'm always saying, you know, look at the complication you get for this. But initially, I'm that aesthetics guy. You know, if something pops and it catches my attention aesthetically first, I will then look into the horology. Now, this thing, 29.5, they put it in the spirit of Big Bang, which is not their most popular model. In fact, round watches are popular from you. Know, the spirit or the tonneau shape or the Richard Mille, quote unquote, looking uh, shapes, is they're not the biggest, but I'm actually a fan of this. If you look at the watch itself, 
not only this is the dial absolutely gorgeous, loud, attracts attention, the strap itself, the integrated these pieces which they painted separately that they then integrated into the rubber strap, but I still would have loved to have seen this in a round case. Thoughts? You think it's fucking hideous, don't you? <laughs> Listen, you know what? I'm actually, like, so I'll say this. I think Kublo has been doing a lot of great releases. They, they have a lot, um, a lot of stuff that they do very well. I don't like this. I think this is just, it's a bit hideous. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more on the loud side. You're a little bit more conservative. Sure. This is very loud. This is very not conservative. But even their loud side, like, they, they did the Flower Murakami watch. I actually really like that. I, I love think that, that watch. Dude, that watch is sick, right? So, I love, especially I, I the think, new one with the turbine in the middle. Exactly. That, this is just a bit, it's too loud, but it's just not my... my but they have the audience for this. Right, and I think, again, this is obviously geared towards the Asian market, the Chinese market specifically. The Asian market today makes up for 60% of all goods bought in the luxury sector. 20% mm -hmm. of that 60% is luxury watches and jewelry. So this is a humongous market. Yeah, not and to mention, that market Go back does a slide, like, how many of these did they make? Let's they also, see. I, th I think it's uh, 88 they, pieces. They made 88 eight pieces. Eight is a lucky number, yeah. Eight is a very lucky number in Asia, and uh, majority of these are going to be limited, something with an eight, yeah. uh, at least for those companies that are smart to do so. And they won't, there won't be a number four. Yeah, you no, know, no. They don't make a number yeah, four yeah, in this yeah, limited yeah. edition. Let's go to the next watch. And the next watch is going to be Vacheron. Now, this is where we're getting somewhere. This is part of the Meteor de Arts collection. My favorite set from Meteor de Arts is gonna have to be the masks. And I like them aesthetically. I also, they also came out around the time I was young and fresh in the business. They were super hot super hard to get. I managed to sell two sets, so it holds a bit of a uh, different value to me in that regard. But we know, without even looking at the picture yet, we know what to expect from Meteor Yards. Craftsmanship to traditional watch to traditional watchmaking, uh, all the jumping hours. To respect for the arts. Yeah, and respect, it's, it's really respect for the arts. Uh, coming in, uh, I think 112000 for the rose gold and 136 for the platinum, 25 pieces each. They always make them super this limited. Is dope. This is and awesome. this is just, this is it. This, this is to what me, it should be. This, this is, is art. Yeah, Meteor the, the arts. Yeah, this yeah. is exactly that. Not to mention that everything is jump, right? Jump hour, jump minutes, jump day, jump day. Uh, this is just uh, it's a day perpetual of, calendar, right? Uh, no, it's, it's not. not. Uh, so you have. Uh, is it just a it's date? It's a day date. date. It's just a day. It's a day date, 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 date right? Yeah. So, but you look at everything. Forget the hand engraved dragon that's like front and center and how it's not too loud and it matches and blends in with, the, look at the dial. Look at that, it's hand painted enamel dial. It's everything about these watches is just wow. Yeah, the dragon sculpture looks so badass. This, this is, is all this hand is, engraved. Yeah, I mean, yeah, awesome. and it's not just, it's not a flat dragon. It's, a, you know, it's, it's, no, it's very it's, 3D. The dimensionality, 3D, would be the dimensionality is there. And that's a watch you look at on the wrist and would do a double take. Much like the Hublot, actually, but maybe for different reasons. Yeah, Let's absolutely. move on to the next watch. And the next dragon <laughs> up is Jaeger. Tribute Enamel Dragon Watch. What I liked about this, and I saw this before, uh, what I liked about the watch is that it is absolutely a knockout, right? You have enamel, which historically has been super collectible, right? Uh, dragon surrounded by clouds, engraved into pink gold rectangular case, right? Now, the dial side is decorated with the Grand Few enamel. What is that? What's Grand Few? It's just a uh, fired enamel dial. Fired enamel. Grand Few. Why could you say fired enamel? Why did they get, get throw the French in there? It's Grand Few. It's just uh, a, it's the method of making it. It's look, uh, it's enamel process. Uh, my only concern with this watch is the price tag. Why is this watch 107,000? Let's look at the watch. Well, it's, it's the failure rate, right, right? So so you have to take into consideration that every time you fire an enamel dial, because this, you know, it's not just as, so easy as you paint it onto the, the back of the case and throw it in an oven and there you go, it's complete, right? This thing has to be- Well, it is that, except it has a failure rate. Yeah, except there's <laughs> a failure rate because they bake it oftentimes multiple times, right? And at any point in time of, uh, of the stages, if it's not done to perfection, because, you know, that is JLC standard, then they have to throw it out. Throw it out so then my again. only question, uh, that the only question I, that's left is $107,000 price tag, how many times did they fail? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so, so as far as I know, so if you know 5231J, for example, right, that was done by a famous enameler, I forget her name, but uh, she's retired now, actually. Was that which, the lady that was like almost yes, blind? correct. Yeah, so, so it was a lady at Patek Philippe who's now uh, unfortunately retired. She also did dials for Laurent Ferrier. Uh, enamel and um, they, they switch now to the 5231G which is a different one done by a different enameler but I believe that dial had a 1 in 20 failure rate so for every 20 dials they made only one actually turned out well. Now I can see how that could yeah. be costly. Let's move on to the next guy and that is going to be Bell & Ross. Now before you say anything 
I actually seen this one before as well, and I like it due to the price tag, unlike the Jaeger, because this one is only 7,900 bucks, and this is an engraving that almost looks like it's tattooed onto the case. And outside of the dragon, obviously the dragon is always gonna be there, it is the year of the dragon, but outside of the dragon, they included other motifs like sun, moon, flowers, trees, and things of that nature, which to me is a bit busy, but yet attractive. What do you think? This is actually sick. It is? Okay, I actually, for no, $7,900? You know what? This is very well thought out, well done. This is well executed. This you is extremely is? well executed. It actually reminds me of, you know, on, on uh, like a Rolex, somebody will get a hand engraved Rolex. Like, it kind of gives me that vibe, and this is actually really, really well done. And honestly, like, if this comes out as secondary and even discounts a little bit, like, that's a watch I would buy. Uh, I, I mean, missed, I wouldn't go that far. I, I, I miss <laughs> how many pieces they made. Let's go back a slide. This was this 99 a, pieces. 99 pieces. Make it 88. Like, yeah. why? Uh, uh, let's, go, let's, let's go back, and we're going to go to Arnold's son, Luna Magna, Red Gold Year of the Dragon Watch. Now, the Luna Magna is a fairly new release from them. Mm -hmm. We saw that at watch time, not last, but the watch two time years. prior to that, two years ago, which I was really, really imp impressed by the watch. Yeah. This is a true independent watchmaker you know, mm -hmm. that a lot of people tend to overlook. Yeah, Arnold, uh, John and, Arnold being one of the most you know, historically important watchmakers, actually... He probably why, is he, why is he most historically important? Oh, well, he's, he's kind of the guy who invented marine chronometers being, you know, one of the most important timekeeping devices for navigation, uh, especially, but also um, a lot of people give credit to John Arnold because he started, the, he was the one who started creating a tourbillon and then Breguet fin completed that Completed work. that. Yeah. Now, one Arnold's son was under the roof of a different company. They killed the brand. A lot of closeouts, overproducing. But if I go back uh, to when I started, uh, some of the HMS pieces they made, the tourbillons, uh, some of the artistic pieces they made for HMS, where these were also hand-painted on animal dolls with pictures of ships. And, I mean, going back to the heritage of uh, navigate, navigation of the seas, some of those older things out there, like today, I think those are the future collectibles, because I think based on the ownership and based on the leadership of Arnold Stunt today, I feel like this brand is actually here to stay. Yeah. Uh, they, they've got a new direction, even you know, in terms of their style, it's completely revamped, and I think they've achieved a more modern sensibility. I think the only thing that is, and, and again, it's no knock on them because at the end of the day, they're handmade watches. It's just their prices, and I, I have this knock against most independent watchmakers. They're uh, trying to hit these like price points that are it's like, too competitive. They don't, really a, they don't really have a choice. But, but I know I know the, the general sentiment. Yeah. Who the hell are you that I should like this watch is ninety three thousand dollars? It's like think who the about hell the are you for me to pay you ninety three thousand dollars? And the biggest issue is that as a collector, spending ninety three thousand dollars on a watch. If I'm a collector that buys retail, doesn't yeah. buy in a second, walks to the boutique and buys, a lot of options at ninety grand. A lot. There's too many options, and that's. Let's the go thing. to the picture of the be watch because I thought and this is a limited edition but of AP. This, this, this is absolutely a knockout. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Now the way the moon is done to begin with in this watch minus the dragon, I was impressed by that two years ago when, yeah. we, when we saw it. I think the model we saw the was moon is also glows in the dark. It, it yeah. was glows in the dark and actually depicted what the moon looks like, sure. which is really really yep. cool. But this with the dragon going through the dial. Typical on in the sun fashion, where you have the offset time sitting at 12 o'clock, the moon, and it feels like this dragon is literally flying around the moon. Probably from everything we saw thus far, this even beats out the Vacheron. I think this is, yeah, this is number two behind the Vacheron, I would say. No, I, I honestly take the brand names aside, aesthetically. No, it's not even just the, I mean, yeah, this is really this, nice. I feel like this is a lot cleaner. Yeah, much more simple for sure. Very legible too. Yep. Let's go to our next dragon, and the next dragon is going to be Piaget. Now, Imperator Dragon Turbion watch. Now, Piaget has long been a huge seller uh, in the Asian market, along with Vacheron. Piaget was actually, at the time I was young in the business, Piaget was number one, but Vacheron being number two is also some kind of a luck thing, and so on and so forth. Uh, you could not get a Vacheron, a modern Vacheron, because this would go, I'm going back to the times where I could pick up a phone, call a dealer, and order pretty much any model at 10 over cost, right? Whatever the dealer cost, the dealer made 10%, and I would order it from him. Piaget, minus Piaget, minus Vacheron, because the allocation stateside was one-tenth of what it was in Asia. The Hong Kong boutique, like the main Hong Kong boutique of Piaget, did more business than all the other boutiques worldwide collectively for Piaget. That's how insane. I remember landing in Hong Kong for the first time and you're at the airport, it's a huge airport, and it's Piaget everywhere, Vacheron everywhere. No Richard Mille, no Audemars Piguet, Piaget, Vacheron. So anyway, they made eight of these, and rightfully so, because these suckers are expensive. We don't know what the retail price 
uh, on this is because it has been published. If I had to guess, this watch retails for over $300,000 because I've seen uh, Piaget's, the Imperator Turbiaz and the likes of this one. I've seen a lot of high jewelry Imperator Turbiaz that retail upwards of a million dollars. And aesthetically, I think this, I'm right now at number one, Arnold, number two, this Piaget, and I just put Vasher on the place number three, just because this is so, I don't know what to call it. It gives me almost like, protect, you know, the protected a Nautilus with a, a, was it a peacock or a phoenix or? Very, uh, very, very, very similar. Very much like in where that. Where the dragon where actually goes, goes from the, the dial to the case. Yep, yep. Absolutely, you are correct. I agree with that. But just the craftsmanship behind this. No, this is beautiful. The, the sky, the zodiac system in the background. It's not too much, it's not too little, it's just right. I mean, the design expands to the side of the case. This took a craftsman quite some time to put something like this together, and I think it's dropped that gorgeous. And yeah. it's a Turbion. They have their small rotor in the front, brought to the front, which has becomes part of the watch, typical in Emper Imperador Turbion fashion. You see it in others. This is just a knockout. Check out some of there if you guys get a chance. Uh, just Google Piaget Imp Imperador Turbion's gem set. Their gem set pieces are just, they're bonkers. Well, Piaget is also somewhat of a jewelry house, right? They make very, very nice jewelry pieces and jewelry uh, in their, their watches. So, yeah, no doubt about it. By the way, to go back to your story about going out of uh, Hong Kong and seeing Piaget, I was recently in Switzerland. You know what's the first watch brand you see? Rolex. Richard Mille. At the airport. Really? Yeah, it's all Richard Mille all along the really? way. Oh, they paid a pretty penny. Let's go to no the doubt. next dragon. And the next dragon is going to be Chopard LUC. XP Yurushi. Okay, now who is Yurushi? I don't know. Yurushi is... Yurushi is a uh, type of lacquer. Lacquer. Yeah, usually it's lacquer. lacquer. So if he, do, he applies lacquer, does that make him a lacquer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, featured dragon at the center. Surprise, surprise. And this was handcrafted in Japan by Minori Kazumi. Okay, now this craftsman specialized in maki technique. Okay, so this is some Japanese lacquer technique, yeah. uh, decoration technique that uses sprinkled metal powder or lacquerware. This yeah, is interesting. You see this, you see this in, in, in different, actually, I'm a, I'm a somewhat of a pen collector, not, not by a big collector, but- uh, you, have maki, a, you have a decent collection of pens. Ma maki, maki pens are, are actually a very, very famous and very, very collectible genre of pens. It's just a, a fashion of making, um, kind of metal work, which is Well, brand actually, and pens usually? Um, it's uh, Namiki. Namiki's Namiki? Emperor, yeah, Namiki's a big, big Mackie. Yeah. Now, so I understand the concept behind this watch. I certainly can appreciate the craftsmanship that went into this, but I'm not overall happy with the design or like the picture itself and the color schemes here. And I feel like the hands are I think the dragon killing, was killing just very dragon. poorly executed. I think the dragon is what, what because the, first of all, the color of the dragon, I think also the image of it, it doesn't look like a great looking dragon. Now this picture's either. a bit sideways, but, yeah, I, I and the I, hands are killing it too. Yeah, the hands are killing it, absolutely. I think in every other watch, the hands, the, the dragon was not interrupted by any yeah. functionality of the watch, where here, again, I give it A plus on the craftsmanship. Yeah. But it's, a two, it's also a 2D sideways image. You know, it's very different when you see these in person, naturally. Absolutely. Yeah. The pictures won't do most of these guys justice. Let's go to another dragon. And the next dragon is going to be Harry Winston. And you mentioned Piaget being a jeweler. Harry Winston is a very prominent jeweler. I feel that Harry Winston, because they are a jeweler, they make some of the most aesthetically good-looking watches, be it men's, ladies, etc. Now, this guy, also eight pieces, jumping on the bandwagon of lucky number eight. And believe me, Collectors out there will pay a lot more for piece number eight number than will pay for piece number one. And this is a ladies watch for a change. And this is what I mean by Harry Winston making beautiful watches. And I can't say anything outside of this watch, minus the fact that it's a gorgeous jewelry piece. Yeah, no, it definitely is. It's a statement maker. It's, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing you can take away from this. Notice, notice that most of the dragons we looked at were not red. This is the first red dragon that yeah. we actually see, right? The Which was actually a significance, right? Because the, in the Chinese New Year, there's always that red dragon. I don't know what the significance so, is. So red is a lucky color. Yeah, red uh, is a lucky it's, it's, so it's like you think Middle East, you're thinking green. You think yeah. China, you think red. Yeah. And I like the way they executed this dragon. I like the fact that it intertwines within the dial seemingly in the clouds. The addition of diamonds is not too much. The addition of diamonds on the on the dial, if you notice, it outlines that beautiful mother of pearl. It's like Again, a it's Milky a Way dial. That's yeah, cool. that's yeah. kind of like what it is. Yeah. Crown being at 12 o'clock, maybe a nice touch just because, just to make it that true jewelry piece. It's not that small, it's 36 millimeters. So I would have loved to see this on a bracelet though. I think having it on a bracelet you know would have emphasized I would do, I would do the jewelry. a pearl. You know how, yeah. uh, 
Brigade the, does the Rene de Naples uh, pearl bracelet. Even the, the Patek uh, one that uh, Queen Elizabeth wore. Queen Elizabeth, yeah. yeah, yeah, like a pearl bracelet. Oh, I that's feel, a very, very... But that would add a lot to the price. Yeah, of course. Uh, but, but again, it's eight pieces red, limited, red you know? strap, very fitting. Yeah. Fist the dragon on a dial. And what is the last dragon piece that we're looking at? Is this the last one? Yulis Narden Blast Terbian Dragon. Taking an existing Terbian, one of the newer ones. Price, hefty price tag, $100,600, where the regular Terbian retails somewhere around the $80,000 price range, I think even less in rose gold. But let's look at the watch because this was also one of my favorites. And the reason for that is because I feel like that dragon is about to fly out of that dial. And I think it has to do with the fact that that existing Terbian, we actually just sold one of them. This looks more like a koi fish than a dragon, if I'm being honest. You're not wrong. <laughs> I think that looks more like a koi fish. <laughs> <laughs> it does. You're right. You're right. Maybe it's the color scheme or maybe the way the way it's just... Yeah, color. I don't know. But may, I guess maybe I'm biased thing. because I actually like that regular model. Sure. I think they did a great job with this particular Terbian. They added a pearl where the Terbian cage is. So I guess A plus on the way this is very, very 3D, but B minus on the actual dragon? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, I agree. Maybe it's, you, now I can't, you said koi fish. I can't see it. Yeah, you can't Because I saw it. a dragon at first. No, no, no. By the way, we have the last dragon in the room, Adrian. Hey, Adrian, how are you? There is another dragon in the room, that's, which is a Beauvais. A Beauvais was a brand that seemingly kind of got forgotten about, but they're still hanging around. They made it super big during the craze prior to the 08 crisis. These things were selling like cockcakes. The Russian or former Soviet Republic markets were fueling the fire uh, because aesthetically they were beautiful watches and they were very flashy. Beauvais, in a sense, is a very flashy watch. It's a two-face watch. It's a watch that converts into a pocket watch that comes with a beautiful chain. High retail price tag, which was actually a factor in that market. When a lot of new money comes into the market and wants to buy expensive toys, Beauvais capitalized on that big time, but I don't think they've ever recovered post the 08 crisis, which is why you don't see a yeah, lot of only, requests for Beauvais. The, the only reason they're still around, I think, is, is just because they make some of the most difficult parts, You know, things like hairsprings uh, for watches that other brands will purchase from them. But yeah, their watches, unfortunately, well, let's have, look at uh, the really watch suffered. because I think aesthetically they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, this is awesome. This is an unbelievable watch. I'm going to go on a limb here and say that I'm going to pick this one over the Arnold & Son just because this is just a little, a little bit more interesting. It, to me, it looks like a, a 3D painting yeah. encapsulated And the three-dimensionality, even, you could see it just in the image, right? Like the, the way that that dial is curved, the way the crystal will be curved, the way that the, the dragon will have such great depth and, and add so much character to the dial. It's, it's, I mean, although we're seeing a 2D image, you can already see just how 3D this watch is. Yeah, and this is a watch you kind of get lost on once it's on your wrist or you have it in person, you hold it. I don't know if they needed that additional, what is it, day-day functionality? Is it day-day or is that? It's a world time, actually. Oh, it's a world time. Yeah, so the world time functionality, I think I would move that to the back. Yeah, possibly. And not to take away because, you know, sort of going with the aesthetic of Arnold and Son where you just have the time and the dragon. But, and then it makes the dragon a little bit busy because he seems a little bit squished. But overall, when you look at this aesthetically, I think it's a beautiful watch. Do we have any more dragons? That's it. This is The Last Dragon. Wasn't that a movie? The Last yeah, Dragon? Yeah, Bruce Lee, The Bruce Last Lee Dragon. Bruce Lee movie? That's why I said Adrian's The Last Dragon. Oh, uh, is that, I see, I see yeah, where you were going with never this. Never mind. People Gu don't get guys, this uh, Watch News episode was a little bit different. Uh, it actually ended up being themed because it is the year of the dragon. It is the first news uh, episode of the year, so I felt it was only fitting to address the year of the dragon. But overall, I've seen this done year in, year out. You have a big hype in the beginning of the year or at the time that these watches come out. Predominantly, all go to the Asian market, although there's quite a following in other regions of the world where people do like Zodiac watches because Zodiac watches are sort of universal, but predominantly this is made for the Asian market. Most of them do sell out. But when they do make it out on the secondary market, the resale value is not the best because Usually when they make it back on the market, it's not that particular year. And those collectors that are into Zodiac watches, especially in Asia, they want the latest, the greatest, and they want to continue collecting throughout the years, which is why some of them do make it out in the secondary, but a lot of them do not because those collectors tend to hold on to them. And imagine the collector this year that the last dragon he bought was, watch he bought was 12 years ago. The issue with a lot of these that I've seen, and I've seen this even with brands like Audemars Piguet when we used to get some of their closeouts, is that not all of them sell out. We had a Jules Terbion Year of the Dragon watch with a beautiful dragon in the front. And apparently they ended up on a secondary directly from the company because they didn't sell all 88 pieces. So, and no authorized dealer because these are the, typically the pieces that the boutiques themselves would sell out on the market because no authorized dealer, unless you're somewhere in Shanghai or Hong Kong, but for the most part, these were sold through the boutiques 
and then no authorized dealer would actually ever take that as part of their regular line, taking a chance of this being so, so, so specific. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go with, I'm still going to go with the Arnold. I'm still going to go with the Vacheron. And, uh, Bulgari, or not Bulgari, Piaget. And so I'm going to go Arnold and Son, Piaget, Vacheron in that order. You? I would go, I think Arnold is two, Vacheron is one, Beauvais three, and the Piaget, not for me. Not for you. <laughs> I got it. Well, whether it's for you or not, we don't have these pieces. I don't know if we'll ever even see some of these pieces, but cool. I appreciate you joining me on this episode. Guys, like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, good to see you in the new year. Happy New Year. So we'll see you next week.